In today's episode, I'm looking at the waiver wire players to add, players to drop, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, we're looking at the waiver wire. We're looking at players that you can consider droppable, players that you can consider adding, flyers, hot players, whole bunch of stuff. Let's talk about that right now. And we will start by looking at guys who can be dropped in category leagues. Now... In general, you're not just dropping these guys for the sake of it, but if you're looking to make waiver wire decisions, if you're looking to open up stream spots, if you're taking in two players in a two-for-one deal, these guys are rostered in a lot of leagues, and they can be considered expendable. The world! What the hell are we even doing? Why is Hassan Whiteside rostered in 60% using Yahoo standard metric and 71 in the advanced metric that we have? Just wait till he gets traded. Wait till he gets released. Wait till he gets the minutes. Is it, is it ever happening? Like, what are we doing with this bloke? Like, has anyone watched him play? He's bad. He's the 238th, sorry, 256th ranked player this season. He's averaging eight points and six boards with 1.3 blocks. Sure, if Holmes gets injured, he can be a streamer, but they just start Bagley there and he plays limited minutes anyway. Sure, the rumors are he goes to the Lakers. What, to be their third string center and not play most nights? I, I don't get it. He's gone. Kendrick Nunn. You know what? Kendrick Nunn has been awesome this year. There is no... In the opportunities he's been given, he has been really good. But we also have to look at it with the lens of no Dragic, no Bradley, no Hero now. At times earlier, it was no Butler. And when people are healthy, he doesn't produce that value. He is the 92nd ranked player this year. So it does seem wild to suggest that he would be a droppable guy. But this is a bloke who, that when players are healthy, he just doesn't play. He comes in, he plays 30 minutes, and then players get healthy and he doesn't play. And that's why his per game ranking is so high. Because when he plays, he plays a lot of minutes and gets a lot of usage. And when those guys come back, he doesn't play at all. Now, I'd be loath to drop him at the moment with Tyler Hero status unknown. But the last two games, he's had, what, 19 combined points and only 18 shots in two games. We've seen the usage dip way back with Dragic returning. And it's only going to get worse. Again, not just a guy that we auto drop, but someone you have to consider. Ron Barrett Jr., is rostered in far too many spots. He just isn't very good, uh, especially for category leagues. Much better points league player. But for category leagues, um, he's just a, a guy that hurts you in too many areas. Low steals, low blocks, not great assists, um, poor percentages, no volume threes. Occasionally or very often gets benched in the fourth quarter. There's just no need for him to be a rosterable um a rosterable 12-team league player in category leagues. If you need maybe a scoring burst, sure, by all means, ha- have a crack, but that's about it. Marvin Bagley, similarly, he puts up points and rebounds, and they are the two biggest volume stats in fantasy basketball, so they look better. Well, his numbers look better than they actually are, but he just does nothing. He doesn't get assists. He doesn't get steals. His blocks aren't great. His percentages are both poor. He doesn't hit threes. His minutes are only up because players are out. Like, at the moment, we're dealing with an injury to Tyrese Halliburton, and Halliburton's often the guy that comes in to replace Bagley. So Bagley's minutes are up at the moment, and he's producing yeah, at an okay level. But again, when we try to look forward, like, is this guy going to be sniffing the top 150? I'd be pretty Pretty doubtful that that would be the case. Lou Williams, another guy who had a nice little run when Paul George was out and when Kawhi was out and then Patrick Beverly was hurting and he was putting up good numbers, but he is the 181st ranked player this year. I don't think that it's a lock that he's back into the one top 150. And if you can't even give me you know, reasonable arguments for him to be a top 150 player, uh, then there's no reason for him to be a must-hold 12-team league guy. He's still rostered in quite a few spots. He can be a nice points add. He can be a nice free-throw percentage influencer, but that's probably about it. For points leagues, a lot of these names still remain on this list because they're still rostered in too many leagues. Duncan Robinson is a better category league player, and I'm not even sure I'm not sure he's a 12-team rosterable player in category leagues. But in points leagues, he just doesn't do it. So he is an expendable type player who really his value comes from hitting threes, and that means nothing in Yahoo default scoring. 
Brook Lopez has been disappointing this season. I think that's fair to say. And I don't think that in a points league, he is a must-hold player. He's sort of on that fringe 145 to 155 type range, which is fine because you roster 156 players. But if he's one of the worst 10 players that's rostered in the league, then he probably doesn't deserve a roster spot because you get more value from streaming that area. Serge Ibaka, we've seen his minutes start to come down. They're playing 21, 22 minutes per night. His value, again, is more prevalent in category leagues where those blocks and threes have more value. But in points leagues, he just doesn't get it going for me. Not likely to crack the top 100 for the rest of the year. In fact, probably not likely to crack the top 125 for the rest of the year, especially with the Clippers going smaller more often. Joe Ingles is an interesting one. When someone is out resting, Ingles, uh, sorry, uh, Conley, Clarkson, Bogdanovich, uh, Mitchell, any of those guys sit, Ingles becomes a must-grab player. When everyone's healthy, he plays 25 minutes a night and he's barely a top 150 guy. And I think that's why we look at him as that fringe type player. Like there are plenty of players in the league we can say, well, we just hold him just in case of an injury. And <clears throat> while Ingles does have a good path because it's you know one of four guys that can miss time and then he you know he'll probably have half the games where he is usable. But in terms of overall, just you know, lock in, anchor this bloke in, I don't think that's the way to go. And Nerland's Noel is in a pretty strong role until Mitchie Robinson comes back. His value is significantly higher in category leagues and points leagues. And if even at the peak of his value where he currently is, he's like barely top 120, and I don't even think he is top 120 with Robinson out, then there's no point holding on to a guy like that whose value is going to decline in, in two to three weeks. Um, yeah, Again, not the guy that you just drop automatically, but when you're looking forward, hey, is he in two weeks' time, will he be the worst player on my roster? Then you know, maybe you sacrifice the 130th best player currently um, to get more value in long term. Let's go on. Next situation, we're looking at some guys who can be short-term ads. We've got a couple of Rockets on this list, Daniel House Jr. and David Nwaba. We've got back-to-backs coming up for Houston, so we're going to have Johnny Wall missing time. We're going to have Christian Wood out, and that means they go small, uh, putting PJ Tucker at center, meaning more minutes on the wing for House and Nwaba. I think long-term, when Wood returns, um, <clears throat> their value is going to decline because they're, you know, we're not going to get that P.J. Tucker at center type scenario. Nwaba's value probably declines more than House's. And then I don't know what they're going to do with Kevin Porter and how he fits into that rotation. But for the short term, there's value there. Danny Green. Talk about him a little bit later more as well. But he is a guy that is putting up... <clears throat> Really strong numbers, really strong defensive numbers. And with Tobias Harris out, we're getting more minutes from Green at the moment. I don't know how long Harris is going to remain out, but he could miss a game, another two games. So Green, as a short-term ad, has some value, especially if you're looking for those defensive numbers. Dennis Smith Jr., the first two starts were a little bit rocky for Smitty. Um, with Saban Lee getting more minutes, but he's you know sort of rested back control of that job with Delon right out, 26, 27 minutes the last two games, producing at a pretty high level. I think he's worth adding in 12-team leagues and let's see where it goes. And Isaiah Roby with Al Horford, um, or even last game, Horford uh, played and Roby had a big game, but Horford's going to be resting games this week. He's going to be resting games pretty much every week, it appears, given the Thunder's schedule. So Roby has some short-term value, but he also has some long-term value as the starting center in those 25% of games minimum that Al Horford rests the rest of the season. For points leagues, some similar names there. We've got Dennis Smith Jr., Jared Vanderbilt's rostered in under 50% of points leagues. I didn't include him in the category league one, but he is a 12-team rosterable guy there. Same with Jakob Pertl, who is starting over LaMarcus Aldridge. I don't know how long that continues, but it is happening now, so make the most of that. Josh, the hitman heart, he has been playing 30 minutes a night. Now, Eric Bledsoe's playing time has spiked back up, but it hasn't really been at the expense of Hart. It's been at the expense of guys like Lewis and Alexander Walker. So Hart does have some 12-team short-term uh, value. At, at least it's probably long-term there too. While the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate, for the Houston Rockets, he's putting up some good numbers. And much like talking about Nwaba or House earlier on, it is helped by the absence of Christian Wood and the resting of Oladipo and the resting of Johnny Wall. Let's look at some deep league ads here. Maxi Kleber um, starting to play a little bit better. I, th I think he's locked in as a starter in Dallas, which is good value, but you're in a 16-team league. Kleber's on the wire. You've got to add him. Isaac Okoro, don't you be too quick to write him off because recently his numbers have started to spike. He's shooting the ball better. His defensive stats are jumping up. Uh, we know the minutes aren't going anywhere. He's a nice 14-team league ad. Andre Iguodala in Miami with no hero, with Bradley out. Now, Butler's dealing with a knee problem. Iguodala's not going to be wowing us, but he's rostered almost literally nowhere. So a guy that can bring in some assist numbers, yeah, yeah he's a horrendous free throw shooter. He doesn't get to the line at all, but getting those assists can be valuable. The Chief, El Farouk Aminu, 
Sometimes may be good, sometimes may be shit. At the moment, with Aaron Gordon out, he's starting at power forward and he's bringing defensive stats. A steal and a block per game, that can be relatively valuable, especially in deeper leagues. And then Jalen Noel, who is going to come in, he's going to be a gunner in place of Malik Beasley. He's not starting in place of Beasley, but he'll get 22 to 26 minutes, you would imagine. He'll hoist up a whole bunch of shots. He won't really do too much more than that, but getting that scoring burst in a deeper league can be something that's quite valuable. Let's look at some must roster players. These are guys who, according to Yahoo's roster percentage metric, are on less than 85% of rosters, and I project them to be top 100 players the rest of the way. Now, this doesn't, you know, maybe this thing doesn't include dead leagues, but regardless, it just needs to be mentioned. I'm just going to run through the names. If they are on your waiver wire, they should be added. Marcus Smart, Norman Powell, Mason Plumley, DeLon Wright, The Rock DJ Robbie Williams, Robert Covington, Maximum Derek White, Darius Garland, Evan Fournier, The Pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy! PJ Washington Jr., Kyle Anderson, Wendell Carter Jr., Jordan Clarkson, and the depressed penis Sadiq Bey. They are all players who are rostered in under 85% of leagues who should be on a roster in every 12 and 10 team league. And of course, deeper. Let's look at some popular ads over the last little bit of time. These are guys who have seen a big spike in their roster percentage. Jared Vanderbilt, yep, I think he should be added in all leagues. Malik Monk with Devontae Graham out. He is shooting the absolute lights out from three. Like, I think he's a top six shooter in the NBA from three. He's getting some nice volume. He's at least worth a look. Dennis Smith, I've touched on him a million times. A million times. Rob Williams. 21 minutes last game. We have to brace ourselves that he might play 14 minutes next game. This is almost like, it's like the Chris Boucher roller coaster, but you have 50% fewer minutes on most nights. But I don't think you can leave Williams on the wave away. You just grab him and let's see what happens. And then Isaiah Stewart's been added in a lot of leagues. I guess it's because he had the double-double last game. And I think we're you know, perhaps expecting him to take some playing time away from Plumley as we move forward. But I'm not 100% convinced that. I will talk about him a little bit later on. Let's look at some hot players. These are guys that over the last week are top 100 guys, and they're rostered in under 50% of leagues using our advanced metric. The Shark, Bruce Brown. Baby shark, do, 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 do. With Kevin Durant out, Brown is starting. He's playing good minutes. And the most important thing that he's doing is giving you good field goal percentage, which is weird for a point guard type player who's playing power forward center. But his field goal percentage is elite. He's scoring well, and he can get some steals. And there is some short-term value in Brown. Dan Green, we talked about already, but really bringing it in terms of three steals and blocks, a a triple one master for so many years, Danny Green. Isaac Okoro, he's a top 100 player over the last week. I told you he was playing well. He's at least worth a 14-team league grab. grab. Dennis Smith, yep, grab him. Talked about him already. And Daniel House is another top 100 guy who is available in in a ton of different leagues. And then we look at some flyer guys. These are options that maybe you want to take a chance on. Noel is a guy I've mentioned already. Let's see what they do with him and a Kogi in that Malik Beasley role. Nick Claxton. Now, I believe that Claxton could actually work better than DeAndre Jordan for this Brooklyn Nets team. I don't believe that Steve Nash believes that, and that's key. But if you do want to take a flyer on Claxton and you're sitting in a pretty comfortable position in the standings, I understand it. His appeal is uh, obvious, but there is going to be ups and downs. Isaiah Stewart, a name that we mentioned already, I just think that they will start to edge his minutes up somewhat. It might be a bit early, I think, in 12-team leagues to grab him, but he's at least someone who's there as a flyer. Kyra Lewis has gone from playing like 17 minutes a night to out of the rotation. It's not working. The Pelicans are losing, and at some point, I think they're going to have to move, make moves and get Lewis and get Alexander Walker in. So I don't mind stashing Kyra, because if there is an Eric Bledsoe trade coming, he's going to have a larger role. And then Ty Jerome has played two games this year for the Thunder, and he's looked good. I still think the Salt Flake Theo Maladon is going to be the guy who is the starter long term. But George Hill is no guarantee to be on this team for a while. And Jerome could easily beat out Maladon for a role. So if you're looking for a flyer who literally might be out of the rotation or could be starting, there is big swings in what Jerome can do. I think he's worth a look. I'll also throw Kevin Porter Jr. in there. I don't know how they find all the minutes for him, but I think the trade deadline will be very interesting because there is yeah, Nwaba, there's House, there's Brown, there's Gordon, there's Oladipo, there's Wall, there's Tate. There's so many guys there already getting minutes and it's hard to see Porter just strolling into play third but you never know with what they're going to do there. All right, guys, that'll do it for me today for this Waiver Wire show. Don't forget to subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.